I put the host of Distractable behind these three doors. Can you find Mark? Hi, Dr. Mandy Meiskins, and let's play the Monty Hall problem. Okay, so let's say, for example, you picked door number one. So I'm going to show you that behind door number two is Bob. Yay, good job not picking Bob. Remember, we're looking for Mark. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to give you the opportunity. Do you want to keep your door number one, or do you want to switch to door number three? I'll give you a second to decide. Well, if you switched your door to door number three, congratulations, you found Mark. Now, I didn't just fix this this one time. You'll actually win twice as often if you switch your door. Let's talk about why. Now, intuitively, there's two doors, 50% probability to open them. But actually, that's incorrect logic because of the order that this information was revealed. Now, initially, we can all agree that there were three doors. Mark could have been behind any of them. So the probability of getting him picking the right door was a third. Okay, so if you picked a door and you kept with that, you ignored everything, you just kept your door, that means that your probability was one third. However, you know that I know where Mark is in this game. So I wasn't going to open the door that he was behind. That wouldn't make sense. So if he was behind either of the other two doors, other than the one you initially picked, I would have opened the one that he wasn't behind. So the probability actually that he had been behind one of those doors was originally two out of the original three. And since I'm telling you which of the two he could possibly be in, the probability when you switch is actually two thirds and it's only one third if you stay with your original door. Now this is super counter counterintuitive and it takes a long time to understand. Uh, so don't feel bad if you don't, but just remember to always switch your door.